The Christadelphians present This is Your Bible, a program dedicated to the study of your Bible to learn about the wonderful future that God has planned for this earth. Join us now as we open up the Bible and reason together around God's Word. Welcome to another episode of This is Your Bible. Today we have with us a very special speaker who's been traveling around the country teaching Bible seminars on how to read the Bible more effectively. He also tells me that he wants to share with us some of the experiences that his Bible students have found. He also tells me that there's a connection between the eating of asparagus and the reading of God's Word. We would like to share that connection with you. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. I don't know what your idea of paradise is. We all have our own views on the subject, but I think that most would agree the scenes we are looking at could be described as a touch of paradise. The Creator made this earth a paradise originally, and then mankind spoiled it by trying to do things his own self-centered way. Mankind has ever since tried to create his own paradise one in which man is glorified and the Creator is forgotten. All around us we can see grim reminders of the remoteness of paradise, reminders that man without God cannot bridge that distance to the true paradise. In the Bible, in the book of Genesis, we're told that the original creation made by God was very good. We are also told that throughout the Bible, that the world will be very good again when Jesus Christ returns to establish the kingdom of God on the earth. In Psalm 72 it says, He, Christ, shall deliver the needy when he cries, the poor also and him that has no helper. He will redeem their life from oppression and violence. In Isaiah 35, The desert shall rejoice and blossom as a rose. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb sing. And in the book of Revelation, there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. Sounds good, doesn't it? This is what the Bible has to say about the good things to come. You can learn more about the message of the Bible and your part in God's plan by signing up for our free online Bible courses at thisisyourbible.com. Just click on the Learn More tab and register for Exploring the Bible. Yes, the Bible does tell us that there will be a true paradise here, again, on earth, soon. Will you be ready? Welcome back to this episode of This Is Your Bible. Today we have with us a special guest speaker, Craig Stickney, who has been traveling around the country teaching Bible seminars, and in particular teaching people how to read the Bible more effectively. So welcome, Craig. It's good to have you with us good today. Good to be here, Steve. So tell me, what are these seminars really all about? Well, the crux of the seminars is to get people to, to just open their Bible and to begin to read it and realize that it is something that they can understand. So that's really the, the basis of the seminars themselves, to get people to realize that it is a book that can be understood and that it's not as complicated as maybe people might think. Mm -hmm. So what, do, what kinds of things do your students find to be most intriguing about the reading of the Bible? Well, I think, I think what people find intriguing is Bible prophecy, and I think those are things that are, are uh, sometimes very misunderstood. There's a lot of things that are prophetic in the Bible that we might not consider to be prophetic. Uh, for instance, uh, in the beginning of Genesis, uh, there's a prophecy right in the beginning of Genesis, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, um, you know, referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of people wouldn't realize that that existed if they weren't looking and reading their Bible carefully. Well, I'm not sure, would you start in the beginning of the Bible? A lot of people might want to jump to the last book of the Bible. Where would you really start? Well, I mean, the most logical place to start in, in anything is to start in the beginning. I, I think, um, I don't know if, if everybody's like me, but um, uh, when I get, uh, for instance, um, a piece of furniture, my first tendency is to throw away the instructions and then go and build the piece of furniture. And, and inevitably, you know, these people have spent a lot of time developing these instruction sheets. And uh, I get to the end of building the piece of furniture, I end up with a bunch of screws left. And, uh, and, or I end up with a piece that, that doesn't fit together. And uh, 
I've often wondered, you know, why is that? And of course, the reason is that I didn't bother to start out in the beginning and read the instructions. And generally what they give you in the beginning is a list of all the parts, bits and pieces. And um, one of the things we try to tell our students is that uh, with the Bible, especially realizing that this is the mind of God, that we need to begin in the beginning, the book of beginnings, the book of Genesis. And uh, so that's where we generally try to get them to start and realize that if they had, if they, all they had was the book of Genesis, that that would be an adequate book for understanding God's plan and purpose. So Genesis is a good place to begin, being yeah. the book of beginnings. Right, exactly. So just tell me, what does asparagus have to do with the reading of the Bible? Well, I think that a lot of people's perception about the book, one is that it's because it's just it's such a huge book, you know, that this book's impossible to understand. And so they've already built up in their own minds that this is going to be uh, unsavory. It's, it's not going to be something that's tasteful. And um, I don't, I've got five grandchildren, all right? And uh, the grandchildren come over and they'll have dinner at our house. And of course, we introduce them to a lot of things their parents don't introduce them to necessarily. Uh, they are in the fast food generation. So, uh, you know, McDonald's and those kind of things is, is the uh, meal of the day. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we introduce them to asparagus, and of course, uh, they bite into it, and it's the most horrible thing that they've ever had. But more importantly, if you even try to offer them the asparagus, they won't even take it. So I don't like it, but they've never tried it. And it, it's kind of like that with the Word of God. You've got to start reading it to develop a taste for it. Uh, I don't especially like asparagus. But over the years, what I've found with asparagus is it's a great carrier. Mm. <laughs> I, I mean, asparagus, raw, like it is there, uh, you dip asparagus in ranch dressing, and asparagus is great. Actually, it's probably the ranch dressing that's great. Uh, you put hollandaise sauce on it. Uh, asparagus is awesome with mm -hmm. hollandaise. And so what's happened over the years is I've developed a taste, probably for the hollandaise and the ranch dressing, but I, I actually have a craving for asparagus with mm. A sauce on it. Well, the Word of God is much the same, all right? The Word of God has this common theme that runs throughout, all right? Like the asparagus. Some of it's bitter, some of it's sweet. But when you take the whole thing, like, for instance, asparagus and hollandaise sauce, and that becomes a meal, all right, it becomes very savory to the taste. And that's sometimes difficult, like especially with young children or young Bible students, to get them to realize that the only way you're ever going to develop a taste for it is to try it. You can say, I don't like it, all right, without trying it. So that's basically what we're trying to do is get them to get an introduction into the word, realize it is something they can understand. Well, you've talked about a lot of different things now, right. and I see that there is a connection that way because some people just don't like to chew on the word of God. Right. There's no doubt about it. It can be bitter sweet in some of its passages. Sure. But you've also mentioned prophecy. And right. you also mentioned we should start in the beginning. Right. So what was this passage that you talked about in Genesis 3 and 15 and, and how it deals with prophecy? I'm not sure I understand exactly how that well, fits in. Could we take a just, look at that? Yeah, looking at, at Genesis 3 and 15. I, I mean, a lot of people don't read. I mean, people think of prophecy as, you know, the book of Revelation, for instance, which is the last book, right? <laughs> so to be consistent with what we're trying to get people to understand is you start in the beginning and mm -hmm. look at the fact that in the beginning... God lays down principles, and God lays down some prophecy. And, and in particular, the one that, that we've alluded to here is Genesis 3 and 15. And we put forth that God, in his infinite wisdom, has laid down a hope. We know the circumstance. Adam and Eve have transgressed in the Garden of Eden, and God is giving them a hope of salvation. So all things have not just come to an end because Adam and Eve have sinned, right? So when we get here... We, in the context, we starting at verse 14. Mm -hmm. The Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle, above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, dust thou shalt eat, and all the days of thy life. We might not say that's a prophecy, but that is a prophecy, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. what do we see? Snakes today crawling around, along the ground. So God said that would happen. It did happen. All right. So now we look at 15. I will put enmity, and this I is God, I will put enmity or war between thee, the serpent, because that was who he was talking to, and the woman, and between thy seed, the serpent seed, 
and her seed, the woman's seed. It, the woman's seed, shall bruise thy head, the serpent's head, and thou, the serpent, shall bruise his heel. All right? His heel being the seed of the woman. All right? There's a lot of personal pronouns yeah. there. Yeah, exactly. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, and obviously the only way we can really see how this applies as, as we're putting forth to the Lord Jesus Christ into a hope is go to the end and we see what happened. So we see, all right, that a blow to the head, which is what the seed of the woman will deal, is a fatal blow, right? Okay. A blow to the heel is not a fatal blow. So when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ and we look at him, what happened? Well, he was crucified. He was crucified. But the grave didn't hold him, did it? No. No, he was resurrected from the grave. So that blow wasn't a blow to the head. That blow was a blow to the heel. In the end, when Jesus Christ comes back, Jesus Christ will do away with what? He will do away with sin. Sin. So he w when he does away with sin, he's dealt a fatal blow to sin. He's dealt a fatal blow to that which disobeys God, right? So here we have, in the very beginning of the book, in the third chapter, a prophecy concerning that which the Lord Jesus Christ will do. Right? So tell me real quickly, if you could, please, this seed of the woman, mm -hmm. you're saying that that is symbolic of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. So where does that seed come from? How does that follow through to get to Jesus Christ. I mean, I see it here in Genesis 3 and 15, right. but can you take me through the Bible and okay. show me where we might be able to follow that seed? This is one of the, one of the, the um, messages we try to leave with our Bible students is to look for echoes. We call them echoes. 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 Okay. So you're looking for similar words, similar phrases throughout the Bible. And that's one of the keys to studying the Bible because what you've got to remember is even though this was written penned by 40 different men, 40 plus men, over 1,600 years, all right? All scripture was given by the inspiration of God. Remember Paul told Timothy, 2 Timothy 3. Mm -hmm. He says, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. All scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, right? So all of it, all right, is inspired by God. So there's a common thought running throughout all of the scriptures. So, if we see a word that keeps occurring and reoccurring, mm -hmm. God's trying to send us a message, right? Okay. So, if so, we take a look at, um, for instance, we're going to look at the word seed, all well, right? Like, because, well, where does the next appearance of that word seed come well, so the, that maybe we could follow that through? Okay. The actual next occurrence, okay, has to do with uh, when Cain and Abel, Cain kills Abel, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Chapter 4. Ca chapter 4, exactly. And after Cain slays Abel, all right, God provides another seed, all right, uh -huh. instead, all right? Mm -hmm. And so we find the birth of that other seed, which was given to Adam and Eve. So we're, mm -hmm. what we're following through here is the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. And we're going to find those people who follow after serpent thinking, which are in opposition to God, which Cain would be a representative of that particular seed, one who was not following after God's commandments, and Abel who was following after God's commandments. And God, because Abel is slain, God provides another seed instead, all right, which is Seth. I want to just make sure yeah. I understand this, though. Adam and Eve were parents, and they gave birth to both one who was a seed of the woman and one who was a seed of the serpent, but both out of the same household? Sure. Yeah, because what you're talking about is, is a thought process. I mean, and that's the thing I think important for people to realize when they're reading the Bible, is that what we're trying to find out is what seed are we? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not necessarily, for instance, what we're going to look at is a promise that's made to Abraham. And what we're going to see is that promise is connected to us. Mm -hmm. Well, we can say, well, I'm not, I'm not Jewish by, by heritage, okay? mm -hmm. but the promise that was made to Abraham extends to me. And how right. is that? Well, let's just take... Well, we'll get there one step at a time, probably, yeah. because obviously I'm jumping ahead, yeah. and I want to make sure that we follow this seed through. So where would we go next to look at this progression of the seed of the woman? Well, the next, um, the next references, when we begin to, to follow this through in the scriptures, is the promises that were made to Abraham. And where would we find that? Genesis chapter 12. Genesis um, 12. 
we have a situation here where Abraham is called out of Ur of the Chaldees, mm -hmm. out of Babylon, and he's called to make a decision. Okay, God wants him to leave, and he wants to, him, he's going to take him to a land that he's never seen before. And uh, the scripture says that Abraham left, okay, having faith in God. Right? He trusted in God that God was going to take him to a place he'd never seen. And that actually becomes the testimony about this man, this seed of the woman, who follows after God's ways. He trusted in God. So he and just in, packed everything up and just left? Just packed everything up and left. Wow. Exactly. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's, it's very amazing. So we look at the situation in Genesis chapter 12. We see now the Lord had said, and this is verse 1, the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, into the land that I will show thee. I will make of thee a great nation, I will bless thee, I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee, I will curse them that curse thee, and all in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. All right? So now let's just keep looking at these promises that are made to Abraham. If we go over into to, um, chapter 13... All right, mm -hmm. verse 14, what do we see? It says, And the Lord said unto Abraham, after that Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, look from the place where thou art, northward, southward, eastward, and westward, for all the land which thou seest, now here we come, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. All right, and That's I will make thy seed mm -hmm. as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. That's and a lot of people. That's a long time, forever. Sure. Has yeah. this happened yet? Uh, no. How do we know that? How do we know that? I mean, another you, lesson. You, you ask a question. Well, you, know. <laughs> you get an answer. How do we know? This is another one of the things that we try to teach our students: is let the Bible mm -hmm. interpret the Bible. Let mm -hmm. the Bible prove the Bible. So we've we've contended here that Abraham's going to inherit a land, right? Because that's what God promises him. He says, "Look northward, mm -hmm. southward, eastward, and westward. All the land which thou seest, will I give to thy you and your seed forever." If we go over to Hebrews chapter 11, which lists uh, a number of the faithful people, seeds of the woman, mm -hmm. right? Those who followed after God's ways. Hebrews chapter 11 lists off Abraham as one of those individuals, talking about men of faith. And in verse, for context, verse 8, by faith Abraham, when he was called to go out, a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whether he went. Well, if we get down to verse 13, what does it say? Verse 13, these all died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off. That's amazing. Yeah. So they have not been fulfilled yet. Exactly. These are promises that God made way back in Genesis and still have not yet come to pass. Exactly. That is amazing. Now, you also mentioned in this promise the land. Where is right. this land that, that he's referring to? What's that all about? Well, the land that, that he would inherit uh, was the land of Canaan, which today we would, we would know as Israel. Right? Okay, very okay. good. So the land is talking about the land of Israel land as of we Israel. know it today. Exactly. Okay, so where else do we see this seed coming up? Is it only in the Old Testament? No. Um, in fact, I mean, the obvious connections, there are a number of others, by the way, just if, the, if we want to follow that through, the promises that are, are continued on to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, all right? David. Because okay. David becomes a really important, in 2 Samuel 7, it mm -hmm. talks about uh, David setting up his throne, right? David was a king over Israel, all right? Mm -hmm. That's a tremendous connection to the New Testament. Because can we, can one, we take a look at that 2 Samuel 7 real sure, quickly? Sure, sure. Because that sounds like that's a real important section that you're talking about because it bridges right. it from Abraham. First we talked about Adam, exactly. then we went to Abraham, and now we're going over to David right. several hundred years later, and yet that seed still hasn't yet come to pass. Exactly. Second Samuel uh, chapter 7 is, is uh, talking about this promise as well, and of course it's relating to, to David as we've said. Um, and just picking up on, on what we're looking at, verse 12, When thy days be fulfilled, talking about David, when David's days are fulfilled and he's dead, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, okay, and sleep meaning he's going to be dead in the grave. I will set up thy seed ah. after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish 
his kingdom. So who is that seed? Let's take a look over at when when Gabriel, the angel, mm -hmm. comes to the Lord Jesus, uh, com comes to Mary, excuse me, doesn't come to the Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> comes to Mary. That would be before his birth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so now so let's look at Luke chapter 1. There we all go. Right? Luke chapter 1 and uh, verse 31. Mm -hmm. It says, Behold, thou shalt conceive. This is the angel Gabriel talking to Mary. Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, shall bring forth a son, shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, she will call the son of the highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. So this seed, okay, of David, spoken of as his, this, of David being his father, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is going to inherit that throne. Okay, verse 33. He shall reign over the house of Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's going to reign over the house of Jacob for how long? It says that there shall be no end of the kingdom. Yeah, forever. 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 All right, so you ask, what's the connection to us? Let's, let's take a look at Galatians. Paul gave an exhortation to these people to try to show them that there was a connection to them. Mm -hmm. They needed to somehow or another embrace the concept uh, that Abraham embraced. What was that concept? It was faith, belief in God. When God tells us to do something, we do it, all right? In Galatians chapter 3, uh, in verse 8, it talks about the gospel being preached unto Abraham, that all nations in him would be blessed. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 16. Now, wait, before you run on, yeah. the one that you just quoted sounds like it's the same verse that we read in Genesis. Yeah, echoes. Oh, yeah. so there's an Absolutely. echo. Absolutely. There Absolutely. we go. Yeah. It's a really, really important principle. And one of the things we recommend, we do a section on, on uh, study aids and study tools, mm -hmm. that you get a good concordance or a good lexicon. Uh, Strong's analytical concordance is a good one. Um, where it lists all the words in the Bible and in the back of a lexicon, and it shows you what those words mean. So if you're not sure where every word is, mm -hmm. you can find that for yourself. So let's, let's take a look at verse 16, all right? Okay. Because we see here the beginning of the connection to ourselves about this seed. And now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. So the connection back to Genesis. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one. And to thy seed, which is Christ. All right. Oh, so there's the connection. There's the connection. All the way back in Genesis 3 and 15, the seed of the exactly. woman coming through that exactly. line of heritage from Adam to Abraham to David, David. And then finally Mary giving birth to that seed, which is, we're told here, Christ. Christ. Okay, so Very now good. how does that help us? How does that help us? Okay, let's, we're going to skip over just, just in the interest of time. Go down to verse 26, all right? Okay, verse 26 of Galatians right. 3. Galatians 3. Here's the connection to us. For you, ye are the children of God. I'm reading from the King James Old English. For ye are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So the connection to Abraham? Mm -hmm. Abraham's faith was accounted to him as righteousness. For you are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Now, it doesn't stop there. Abraham couldn't just believe God when he said you had to leave her of the Chaldees. He had to go, right? So it takes action. We have to action. act upon these things that exactly. we believe. Exactly. Which Abraham was a Hebrew, right? Yes. The word Hebrew is the word Eber, and it means to cross over. And the first thing Abraham had to do was cross over in his mind. He had to decide, I'm going to follow God. Not my own ways, I'm going to follow God. And then he traveled up, and eventually he ended up crossing over the river. Oh, he literally, did. Oh, literally so into the land of Canaan. He had both a crossover in his mind and so physically. You, exactly. So you can't just do it up here. You've got to do it both mentally and physically. For So we're connected to Christ by faith. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Awesome oh, connection. Man, now wait a awesome minute. Connection. I got to back up here. I got to make sure I understand what you're talking about here because there's a lot going on in this particular passage. Absolutely. First of all, you're saying that we have to have that faith. Right. Like Abraham. Right. We have to cross over and change and have an action, a change of life. Right. Okay. But what's this about verse 27? We got to be baptized? Yes. 
You have to be baptized. Right. It doesn't do any good just to have just the intellectual, all right? You've got to put something into action. Okay. Okay. And the scriptures is clear. Believe and be baptized, all right? So the baptism is an act of death, burial, and resurrection, a crucifying of the flesh, a commitment on our part that we're going to follow God. Abraham could have just come over in his mind and stayed in Ur of the Chaldees, mm -hmm. but he didn't do that, did he? And that wasn't okay with God either. God wanted him to leave. He had to leave and he had to follow God literally. And, and that's what baptism is. It's an outward show of an inward commitment. So after we're baptized, then it talks about that there's no real difference here, male or female, Jew or Greek. And then it says right. this comment, we're all one in Christ. Right. What's that mean to be in Christ? Well, it comes back to the whole concept of adopting the ways of the seed of the woman, all right? We have, Jesus Christ becomes a covering for us. He was a, mm -hmm. he atoned for our sins, all right? Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, we have to get into Christ. Yes. All right? We, we need to find out what does the scripture say about how Christ led his life. Mm -hmm. He followed the ways of God. And we need to get into Christ. And we need to follow the ways of the Lord Jesus Christ, which if we're following Christ, we're gonna be following God's ways. Very good. And the last part, verse 29 says, and this is the key, I think, the, the crux of what you're really trying to put forth here, that if we are then baptized into Christ, we have put on Christ, then are we Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promises? Exactly. That is amazing. Right. So the same promise about inheriting the land, the same promise about living forever in the land, right. is given to us by this adoption, as it were? Exactly, exactly. So it doesn't matter if I'm a, a male or female. It doesn't matter if I'm a Jew or a Greek. Right. This right. is truly astounding. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you so very You're much welcome. for sharing these things with us today, Craig. My pleasure. It has been great having you here with us. Thanks. So we find that we have a wonderful hope set before us in the Bible from the beginning all the way back in Genesis 3 and 15 is a prophecy, a promise of God separating out a people for his name who would follow that which is called the seed of the woman and separate themselves out from that which is the seed of the serpent and following that through the promises made to Abraham and to David and then all the way finding that the Lord Jesus Christ is that seed and now we being baptized into Christ can have a place in that land forever. It's a wonderful promise. Please stay tuned that you might hear more about an offer for a pamphlet that would tell you more about the things we've been talking about here this day. And I thank you very much for being with us today. That is truly amazing. I thank you so much for being with us today. The This Is Your Bible series of television programs is brought to you by the Christadelphians, to stimulate you to search the scriptures for God's truths. We believe the Holy Bible is the inspired word of God and reveals a wonderful plan for salvation to believing men and women. Although it was written by different people over a span of 1600 years, the message is the same from beginning to end. To realize this book contains God's word is to begin to understand its importance and our need and responsibility to study it. For pamphlets and articles on this subject and other Bible subjects, go to www.thisisyourbible.com, click on the Library tab, and select from Basic Bible Teaching, Bible Study, Doctrine, Life, Prophecy, The Christadelphians, in addition to our library, thisisyourbible.com offers online Bible study courses and Bible answers to your questions. Select www.thisisyourbible.com to increase your understanding of God's Word and learn about His future kingdom on the earth.